Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 6 of Can't Teach Size, a hockey podcast. I'm Liz, I'm joined by Brady today. Brady, how's your weekend? How's your week been? Halloween weekend, probably some nuts stuff going on, hey? Some, a pretty spooky weekend. Uh, n- yeah, I mean, it's been fun. I've been doing, um, I've been doing Sober October all, all month with my girlfriend, but we decided that uh, that stops this weekend because obviously it's Halloween weekend. You know, you got to go and have a little bit of fun. Um, so I'll be honest, not 100% right now. Um, didn't go too crazy hard last night, but uh, still feeling the effects from Friday and then also I had a couple drinks yesterday too. So uh, we'll see how this episode goes, uh, I'm, I'm, but I'm feeling all right. How about yourself, Liz? <laughs> I'm I'm going. I was talking to Brady before this. It's been a long night. We hosted a social last night. Um, for those of you from Winnipeg, it was at Cowboys. So, and it was a triple venue. You cringe. know, everyone was freaking out. <laughs> yeah, it's very cringe. I I haven't been to Cowboys since I was like fresh eighteen. Like I went a couple times, and I just had to retire from that club scene. Not not for me, but I will like, say the fourteen hundred people was nuts. The triple venue is is kind of hype when it when they opened it oh, up it, too. It was great. But yeah, and honestly, I, the craziest part about the triple venue to me was that there was one DJ in each venue, and it's like yeah. triple venue for those of you who've never been there. It's like they're attached inside, but it's like the bleeding of the music was actually not that bad. I was worried that like from the second, like the middle venue, you would be able to hear both like DJs yeah. from the other side. It's like oh, that's gonna be awful, but it was actually like very good. So I was like, I was quite impressed with that. I was like, okay, it's okay. it's very beneficial to them that like the Tavern United that's attached to them used to be a nightclub. Because it's mm. it's gigantic and also like it is laid out very nicely for to to like move the tables aside and have like a party kind of night. So, uh, so yeah, it's very fun. Um, it was so funny. I was in the Tavern United and there was like they'd push all the tables to the side and everything like that, and they have like a fake like Super Bowl and a fake Stanley Cup on one of the yeah. tables. And one of my <laughs> friends just decided to go with a bit the whole night that he thought that was the real Super Bowl, <laughs> and he'd be like, "Dude, like, do you think I can go touch it? Do you think I could take a picture with it?" And people were like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> the Stanley Cup one, I think, like, I don't know much like the Super Bowl, like the actual like it, trophy. The, the Stanley Cup one was definitely not to scale, but I think the the Super Bowl one was actually like pretty accurate. Yeah, like, like I mean, it was a silver probably like $50 thing like it's not like it's like that legit but the Stanley Cup mm-hmm. one was like significantly smaller you yeah. know so it's like you can't really commit to that bit but definitely committed <laughs> to the Super Bowl one it was quite entertaining should have stole it by the end of the night <laughs> I, I I was looking at some of the um Halloween costumes of NHL players and stuff like oh, that and true sometimes they're so funny but other times they're just they're just not good at mm-hmm. all like I my favorite brand of Halloween costume is beautiful gorgeous sexy girlfriend with guy who is prop that is my favorite <laughs> brand of yeah. halloween costume and i love it when I, nhl players do that i'm like absolutely show off your queen and just exist yeah. to compliment her costume please and thank you yeah that's that's always a good one i haven't seen enough it also was were people dressed up for your social like were you dressed up what was, what was I your was, costume? Yeah. So, okay, okay. Everyone thought I was Chucky, which was really embarrassing. Um, So I we were hosting the social. There were a group of eight of us. Like, it was a school thing that we were hosting. It's Commerce Social. Boo. I know. Ooh. Um, <laughs> So there are eight of us. So we were Despicable Me. Um, oh, so okay. That makes sense. So we're four girls, four guys. So the four guys were all the minions. And then our president uh, is a girl. She was Gru. And then the three of us, other so girls, were the daughters. So I was, like, the young one. So I had, like, a unicorn that I kept in the front pocket of my overalls the whole evening. And I actually didn't lose it by the end, which is pretty impressive. So i'll be honest i was I, agnes <laughs> when, when i saw it when i saw like photos on your snapchat i was like yep that's 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 chucky <laughs> i definitely really thought, i definitely thought you were chucky yeah <laughs> no no <laughs> but to be fair that makes sense because i didn't i didn't I, I saw the unicorn thing and i didn't it just didn't click for me but yeah i yeah I it's ended hard up... like go ahead go sorry on. No. <laughs> no, I was just saying, like, it's hard, like, you know, the guys who are dressed up as minions, like, if they're just, you know, walking around in the evening, you know what they are. Yeah. But me, I was just walking around with a really high ponytail and some overalls. People were like, okay, yeah, you what need are your, you? You need your crew. You need your crew around you. Absolutely. Exactly. That's funny. I and you're um, just going around putting out fires all night, so we obviously weren't hanging out together, so yeah. it was like... I, I, I imagine that was uh, a wild, a wild event. Um, oh, I, yeah. I kind of phoned in my costume because uh, I, like, the party that we went to on Friday was a thing, like, one of my girlfriend's friends parties so uh so her and her sister were like we're gonna make our own costumes and dress up as like forest fairies and i was like i there's nothing i can do that can really like 
accent that so i'm just gonna no. i'm just gonna go to valley village and see if i get inspiration i found this really uh really sweet like hawaiian shirt with like these like tiki heads on the bottom and i'm like cool i'm a uh, vacationer slash spring breaker guy and it phoned it in but it was it was good i i enjoyed it that's I what wish- i'm actually thinking of doing tomorrow i have to dress up for work and i'm like what is a work appropriate like halloween costume like i don't know if the same like not yeah. all my halloween costumes have been the most workplace friendly so like i'm trying to think <laughs> of something so i think i'm gonna do that my dad has like a winnipeg jets hawaiian shirt oh that's so i sick. think i'm just gonna be like a tacky tourist put on a bucket hat and put on the yep. the hat or get, the get, shirt, a fa- get a fanny pack yeah, exactly. The, all the fanny packs I have are alcohol branded, though, so I probably can't <laughs> wear those. This is not. Yeah. And I think the funniest part about this is that I'm like literally not a partier whatsoever. So it's just like, <laughs> oh man. But anyways, anyways, we, we, are, can, we but... can probably move on to to hockey stuff now. I guess. Um, what are we talking about first here? I guess we're talking kind of Jets stuff first of all. Yeah, uh, might as well jump in with that a little bit, and then you know expand. Um, um, Brady, I have a question for you. What's up? Don't, don't. No, I already know what you're going to say. Don't. The Jets a wagon? <laughs> no, they aren't. <laughs> they, okay, they barely beat uh, both the Coyotes and um, and the Kings. Like, I remember looking at the, like, the. I know everyone, you know, has their opinions about, you know, advanced stats and stuff like that. But I, everyone loves a good de- deserve to win a meter. And it was like. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, in the Kings game, I think it was like 75% Kings, 25% uh, uh, Jets. And uh, hey, uh, th- just win, baby. That's that's all that matters. That's the only stat that I, matters, right? I don't understand the whole like, oh, whatever advanced stats. Like, it's like, okay, I don't care. Like, even if you watch that game, it was horrendous. Oh, yeah. Like, it was a really bad game. Yeah, and like a lot of people just look, even just look at like shots to give a better picture into the game. And like, I'm pretty sure the Jets got outshot, like only scored single digit shots every period. And the Kings had like 13, se- I think they had 17 in the first period, which is awful. Like the Jets need to to start better on time. Um, but and that that's clearly been an issue for them. And actually, I think I think I think Perfetti had a good quote the other day. Um, it's nice because he had a quote basically just basically saying like, we need, we need to start on time. Like we haven't been starting on time, which it's very nice to actually see, uh, a, a player being like, yeah, you know what? This is not a sustainable way to keep winning, but, um, no, totally. Cause yeah, like that's the thing like that you were saying, you know, like obviously you can look at wins and say, okay, better team. But if you want a better picture, then you look at something a little bit more specific, like shots, but even still, you know, a team can have more shots, but they could just be really bad ones or whatever and like maybe it's like you you come in shoot it rebound as a turnover and then back they go and the other team cycles back a bit like obviously we know that shots on their own aren't always the best indicator either so you can look a little bit further at things more like expected goals like you can always break it down a little bit more to get a better picture and that's the Mm -hmm. whole concept of like so it's just like i feel like you cross a threshold of regular stat versus advanced analytics because like wins are not advanced shots are not advanced but then if you go beyond shots you want to break it down a little bit more that gets into something that's usually a little bit more mathematical um than just data collection so Mm -hmm. i feel like that's when people get all bent out of shape but yeah like if you look at any metric of that game other than the win it was not a good jets game people get bent out of shape as soon as they don't uh fully understand a thing and i think that like for a lot of people the intro to like advanced stats is like coursey is but people don't understand that Corsi is just shot attempts and like the, the amount of times that you attempted to shoot the puck or, or were in a position where you could attempt to shoot the puck on net. Um, just cause it doesn't hit the net doesn't mean you didn't get the opportunity. So I guess like that's the first layer, but then I think having it named as a thing called Corsi, people are like, yeah, what, what the fu- fuck is this? But and people uh, also get into shape when it gets adjusted. It's like when it's like a per six year or whatever, but it's like we do that with everything either. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, he's a point per game player. Oh, look at that. There you go, point per game. It's like, for example, like Austin Matthews. I don't know, like um, in one of the seasons that he scored a lot of goals, he didn't play the full 82. So people were looking at his like, you know, goal per game pace mm-hmm. and whatever like that. It's like, yeah, we adjust things all the time to make it more even. Like I'm pretty sure Craig Anderson right now is the Dude. only goalie in the NHL <laughs> with a one a oh. same percentage of one. He's he's been doing great, man. Uh, I'm I, lo- I love to see that the, that the Sabres are doing well. It's it's a good vibes there. It's hilarious that they're actually doing well without Eichel now that he's gone. But yeah, that's kind um, of funny. Anyways. Vegas is also doing well, though. So shout out, Jack. 
true. That's true. Um, I want to see him do well. But. I do too. I, I and I'm actually glad to see the like I, as much as I despise the the Golden Knights, it's nice to see them doing well um, because of you know they actually they're a team that you're like they deserve to be a good team and you know while it is fun to to look at them and laugh, it's like it's very different to look at like the Oilers and be like that's a team that's doing well where I'm like it's really just driven by two guys mostly that you maybe, lucked out on maybe, like maybe three like i'll give hyman a little bit of credit he's been pretty good but like yeah but even but, without him the yeah. oilers are still the oilers who cares exactly anyways i think we're getting a little off track here i feel like we should go back to the coyotes because the jets played them uh as the first game at mullet arena the uh the asu arena um that the coyotes will be playing at for the next three four pro- maybe even five years like i think it's five i feel like i heard five somewhere like that's like the estimation at well this because time or they're something. they're planning on building uh, an arena in tempe which i or, or which i believe is very close to where asu is i'm not 100 percent sure mm-hmm. unfortunately but yeah um, i think so but but for that like where they are planning out this this arena to go up like there's nothing at the moment like they're it's like a landfill or something so, right, and they haven't like started the plans or like have the whatever. And we all know construction projects usually take longer than anticipated anyway. And stuff. Yeah, so like exactly if they had like a set blueprint and timeline and whatever, but I don't think they have any of that stuff yet. No, I don't think so. Um, but I mean, the, they have a plan, so woo. Yeah, one of the uh, the very interesting things to come out uh, leading up to their first game there. Um, so the Coyotes are currently still the the AS, ASU is still not completely renovated yet like they haven't finished the like home and away dressing rooms yet um at at the at the arena so um rather than doing kind of what the uh the islanders did last year um which is like they started their season with like a was it like a a 17 game road trip something like that yeah they didn't play at home until sometime like mid-november yeah, for sure. Like instead of doing that, they ended up saying, "Okay, we're gonna have four games at home, and we'll have we'll just make do for what's uh, going on here." And uh, I'll I'll bring up the photos. the <laughs> the home the like the home dress. Okay, everyone was losing their mind about the the away dressing rooms because they saw the like it coming up and like it wasn't finished yet. Um, they're still putting up those. What are those called? Like the separation. Um, uh, like. It- the stanchions kind of no like oh god like they're they're like curtains yeah like those black curtains they're held up by metal rods and that was going to be the 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 away team's dressing room uh on like a a a rink that was beside it but if you look at the like home dressing rooms like i have it up on the screen here oh my god this looks like a peewee dressing room like i've i currently play in a beer league that has nicer dressing rooms than this um I, I get everyone losing their mind about the uh, the away ones, but at the end of the day, the away ones weren't done. Um, and actually, once we saw them completed, I actually didn't think it was that big of a deal. Um, did Did you see the the home dressing rooms or no? Um, I don't even know if I did. I definitely saw the away ones. The away ones um. were when when they were being put up. Everyone lost their minds on it, but then at the end, once the Jets were like there they posted a picture of Ling, like oh this is our dressing room for the day and oh, i'll be yes i saw the the home one yes i did i oh, just did? i pulled it up super quick yeah i saw that oh my god <laughs> like that one is brutal i i i think that one deserves much more hatred than the away ones because like i don't know i i think that the away ones once you saw like the final product it you know it's it's big it has a lot of room in it that you can even see like a a, a, a kitchen not a kitchen but like a a drink machine in the back it's just very funny that's on like a, a rink where they took the ice out but yeah and i think the thing that like the walls are curtains like people are just bent out of shape about that like it's just kind of mm-hmm. you know it's super bush like yeah i get that um but yeah and then i mean going to the actual game itself the atmosphere seemed like really really fun there one of the things i think was the smartest thing i think a couple days before the um the first game, uh, there were announcements that came out that that ASU had held, like I think it was like two hundred or maybe three hundred tickets aside for purely just for students to go to the game. Um, I don't know if there's any like discount on it because I know we all know that they were expensive tickets. But regardless, um, I'm gonna have a a weird take here. I actually think that the ASU thing will be good very long term for the Coyotes because at the end of the day, not everyone who goes to 
uh, ASU comes from out of town. Like there are people who are likely going there because it's their local state university, right? Well, it's yeah, ASU state university. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. And so, um, the way that you the way that you develop a fan base is you get people interested and hooked at a at a younger age, and you get them while they're young and then they they continue to have uh, a fandom for them so i like i'm thinking about like five years in the future let's say they actually if everything goes right here like this could actually be the the starting of the new fan base that is for the arizona coyotes and so i'll actually give the nhl some the tiniest monicum of of credit here where i actually don't think that this is going to be as bad as everyone thinks it will um, because at least like the coyotes seem to be having fun with with it. And like, I don't know. I like, you know, when we've gone to ice games, like ice games just are just gonna talk about that. Ice games are wild. Like everyone just loves to like just because you're so much it feels like you're so much closer to the game. It feels like you have so much more interaction. Like we go there and have fun. Uh we we know a couple couple of our friends love to just heckle at the ice games. And I feel like that's exactly what the student section at the uh, at the ASU games would just exactly be like and yeah like and i know for like myself personally like if i um you know right now for example if i knew that there was like a student section at a bomber game right in the lower bowl like really close to the action and it's all going to be students and like we all know that if we're from winnipeg that bomber games can get pretty rowdy in some of those like fun sections i would absolutely grab a couple friends and go and i don't even love cfl football that much like it just like it's the thing to do like that's a lot of fun like people like sporting events and it's like if it's discounted and it's fun it's you know intimate up close and personal like i would love to be a part of that student section like sounds like a lot of fun and i totally agree with what you mean about kind of you know the whole concept of growing the game is something that we talk about all the time and making it more marketable to students is absolutely something that you should do and we all know the hockey is such a joke down there um so why not try and make it a little bit more appealing in in five to seven years say they actually get into this new arena like that's when your students are going to be graduating starting to get their actual jobs and it's like if if they're like you know if the season tickets are not don't cost an arm and a leg like they do up here in canada like absolutely like that's how you get a fan for life is when you when you entice them by giving them these really fun experiences when they're in their 20s like i don't know i i can just see this like if if hockey is going to work in arizona as it very clearly hasn't for the past little bit. Um, it comes down to one, having a fan base that is willing to show up to the games and two, having an arena that is not um, super encumbered to get to. Like that was, I think one of the issues with the Glendale arena was that it was like really difficult to get to also. Um, I mean, I don't know personally, I just have heard. It wasn't in stories. Phoenix. Yeah. It was in Glendale. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And no, like, exactly. It's the same thing. Like Canadian Tire Center in Ottawa has a similar issue. Oh, fuck. Um, it's just in a bad location and stuff. And that's what like for us with Jets games. Like there are so many bars around. It's right downtown. It's it's a great venue. It's so um, easy. It's so easy. It's so easy to, to just... get to you. Mm-hmm. And it's also so easy. Like I don't know if you're the same as I, but like sometimes I'll be you know downtown. People are like mm, Jets tickets. Or like ah oh, yeah Jets tickets. Like, you know <laughs> you weren't always planning on going to the game, but it's in the area where there's stuff to do. So yeah, I like that a lot. And I also think that um. Like, if you're looking at, you know, developing fans and having people show up to the games, it feels a lot more fun, I would imagine, when you're in a small, packed arena as opposed to a big, empty arena. Exactly. And, like, you know, this when it's small like that, you can feel how loud it is. And, like, I think I saw a lot of stuff about, like, even, like, student sections chanting stuff like, like, who cares after... Like so, when they're announcing like who the Jets scored, and it's, you know, like yeah, oh, who cares? Like sh- stuff like that is that's ex- what we do at ice games. Oh, yeah, exactly. And like that's that is how like like think about like remember back in like 2018 when like uh when the Predators were like getting really good, and then one of the whole bits was like after someone got scored on, like after the Predators would score, they would chant like say it was like Matt Burden, they would go Murray, Murray, it's all your fault. It's like stuff like that is so fun and so funny, and like that's how you get like uh you know it's such a fun and enjoyable experience is having like people drunkenly or not drunkenly just being like getting in on the action, yelling and and feeling a part of something. Oh, like, I that's- get into that when I'm sober for sure. Yeah. Passion. Absolutely. You just need to <laughs> enable it and let it happen. Exactly. And I think they're doing a good job. If if you didn't see, they also like because like obviously mullet arena is, is, is kind of a funny name. Um, they also had like these mullets headband things that they like gave out 
to the to the rink, which like again, I feel like they're just enabling, you know, we got dealt kind of a shitty hand here. We have to, you know, move into a college size rink. Let's make it, you know, let's make the best out of it. Let's have uh, have a little fun and, you know, give the entire crowd these blonde mullets like like their flow, like their Yager flow back in the day. Um, I don't know. Uh, I just I think I think they did a great job for, you know, the hand that they were dealt. But um, but unfortunately, they they took an L in overtime to the Jets. Uh, it, it will say I will say it is nice to see the Jets uh, 2.0 beat down the Jets 1.0. Um, I feel like there was a little bit of extra. Um, a little higher stakes on this game than than usual, but anyways, um, what's next? What what else do we want to talk about? I thought we we're gonna we'll jump into a couple other teams. You know, we touched on some Arizona stuff. Some other teams had some, you know, interesting weeks. When are we gonna stop talking about the Vancouver Canucks? Man, uh, I think maybe this week. Hopefully, I don't know. Maybe this will be the last time for at least a little bit. But um, they finally won a game. Can, uh, can we have a, a a round of applause uh, applause for the uh, the Vancouver Canucks? Yay! Congratulations, guys! Um, they finally won a game. I think they won two now. Um, Bruce Boudreaux finally gets his six hundredth um, win. <laughs> Been sitting on that one for a while. <laughs> even even uh, there was a video of their like post game in the dressing room thing, and Bo Horvat has the game puck. He goes. Uh, you know, this one took a little bit longer than we hoped, but uh, you know, four hundreds. Uh, oh wait, six hundred wins for Boudreaux. Like he even he he got the n- number of wins wrong <laughs> too, oh, man. and then corrected himself. He's like, oh sorry, I, you know. And Boudreaux's just like, thanks guys, let's uh let's keep her going. But um, other than them finally winning, I guess the only other thing to talk about is they they made a couple trades. Um, they traded for, uh, I think the main one was the Ethan bear trade. So they, uh, they got Ethan bear and Lane Peterson, um, for a 2023 fifth round pick from the hurricanes. Um, Ethan bear was obviously not playing for a very long time in for a while now in her, in Jesus in Carolina. Um, but now, uh, you know, for the price of a fifth round pick, they get a prospect and who is going to be their best right-handed defenseman on their team. What do you think? <laughs> oh, God. Not Tucker Pullman, that's for sure. <laughs> not Tucker Pullman, uh, not Tyler Myers. Uh, I don't even know who their other one was. Uh, like Luke Shen or something? No, I think he's a lefty. I can't remember. I don't know, but that's besides the point. No, I, I like the trade. Um, Like, obviously, like, first, this is more on, like, a personal level. I love the idea of Ethan Bear playing in a Canadian market. I think it's so Me good too. for the exposure because of how many Indigenous kids we have in the country. And it's, you know, the whole um, visibility thing is huge for all people. Um, so I think that having him as, you know, someone that people can look up to in a local market, I think is huge. So I'm really yeah. happy that he's back in that sense. Um, but also Carolina has too many defensive men. Yeah. Um, so if you know do what you got to do move your move your pieces around i don't like carolina retained and got some pieces some very minor pieces back so i didn't love it in that sense because um but if they didn't want them anymore they didn't want them anymore i think vancouver got a good player so i think that's also just doing right by the player i mean they only got like a fifth round pick back so like and they retained too i think oh they did oh yeah i guess i i'm 25 percent or something like that yeah i'm just looking at the uh yeah it was the fifth you're right yeah um regardless though i mean it is what it is um the uh, the other trade was uh i can't remember what it was for but the main pieces of it was mikey di pietro got traded um right, yeah. i believe to the oh, who was it it was to the bruins for like was it stud studnica or whatever oh, his name Jack Stanica, yeah that's and right. someone else um the only thing i'll say there is like i i mean I those are both prospects who kind of haven't really panned out my main thing was no definitely um, What's his name? Mikey DiPietro was a goalie who I definitely thought was going to be an NHL starter, at least backup at some point. Um, but I think the Canucks really did him dirty and like kind of shot his confidence. They brought him into the league way too young. I remember the first game he played in, I think he gave up like seven goals and it was just like he got absolutely no. thrown to the fire. And so I think that that's, you know, as you know, looking at the Bruins, I think that that's a, a good idea for a, a reclamation project. And like, Hey, if you don't think it's going to happen with uh, Jake Stanika, who I think was he one of the three drafted 
No. No, he wasn't? No. Okay, no. no. Uh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> he was not one of At the three point, drafted. At point, you cannot call one of those guys a prospect. Jake DeBrusque, Matt Senishin, and Jakob Zaboral. Those aren't prospects anymore. Those are just guys. Yeah, those are dudes. Those are dudes who are playing. Um. Anyways, regardless, uh, I, I you know I wish Mikey uh, DiPietro the best. I hope he can uh, turn it around. Uh, same thing with Stanika. I hope that that's that goes well for him. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 just glad to see the Canucks uh, have won a game. Um, hopefully things are going to be get better. Uh, obviously Quinn Hughes is still hurt, so they're kind of uh, boned in that sense. But um, you know, it is what it is. Speaking of boned, I know that um, <sighs> people were worried that. Um, JG Miller had broken his foot or something after he scored, um, like a hat trick or like a couple of goals in a game. But he is actually fine, right? He's still playing. He's not he's, hurt. He's good. Yeah, he's he's okay. Okay. Um, I wonder what's gonna. Ha- they're. I think they're gonna be the most interesting team come trade deadline. Cause like when you have yeah. your captain who's a pending UFA and a guy who maybe you signed to a long term deal, and you're like, I don't know if we should try and get out of that. Um. I don't know. Like, I think that they're going to be a really interesting team come then. But who knows? Maybe they turn it around completely and they just get uh, the vibes rolling again. And I, I mean, they're the I think the Pacific Division's kind of pretty obvious who's at the top. Um, yeah. But maybe they can sneak in. Who knows? I, the West is going to be such a weird spot when it comes to the, oh, the wild card. Like, and it's also it's also GMJR. So you never know <laughs> what that guy's going to do. For real. Um. Yeah, I mean, the only I, – I don't have anything else to really say on the Canucks. Um, uh, to move on, I think we have to talk about the Leafs, unfortunately. I know it's your least favorite topic. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, no, they're just under such a microscope that anytime anything happens to them, it's magnetized by how we perceive it and how we look at it. So yeah. I get it. Yeah, so uh, the Leafs are currently sitting second last in their division. Um, they are four, four and one, which is objectively not the worst record. Um, but the, their issue is that they have been losing to teams. They should not. Um, so those, Montreal, those Arizona. <laughs> yeah. So the main ones would be Montreal, Arizona. Buffalo. Uh, did they lose to Buffalo? They haven't played yeah. Buffalo. No. What? Oh, my bad. <laughs> That's okay. No, they've lost to Montreal, Ottawa. No, sorry. Montreal, Arizona, uh, Vegas, San Jose, and uh, the Kings just most recently. That's San Jose's only win of the year. No, it's their second win. It's their second win. That was just a couple days ago, right? right? Yeah, that was um, I think it's that like was on Thursday. Their second win of the year. <laughs> yeah. Boy, oh boy. They they are really fighting for the uh, for the Bedard sweepstakes, although the Ducks are even lower than them, um, but have played last game. Um yeah, it's things are not good in Leafland. Like I, I think one of the big things is like you know the sc- the standings you know can tell uh, a very you know, a straight up story. Um, but also I think it you know when you watch the games and you see kind of a pulse on the on the fan base, um, everyone's losing their minds. It seems like the every game that the Leafs play and lose recently, they're always like really bad losses. Like I think Matthews has been like pretty invisible this season i was watching um some video came up on my recommended on youtube the other day and it was or and it was just like a breakdown of their game against like the kings and just showed how like multiple times the leafs just were not putting any effort in um other than like john tavares which i think he's been doing pretty good but man like it's king it's it's so like i i don't have a vested interest in the Leafs, but I can completely understand where the frustration comes from. When you have these guys who are making such like a, such a high amount of money for such a high percentage of your cap and they, you know, game by game won't go and put the effort in to actually like, you know, provide their value defensively, offensively, like, man, where is Marner? And where is like Matthew's been Marner's was, was like super frazzled for a bunch of the, the early game seasons after, after the whole like Keith comments come out that being I can't remember exactly what he said. He's like, we need our, our star stars. Players. Yeah, our best players aren't acting aren't... like their best players right now, kind of thing. Exactly. I mean, I think and he's right. So he's right. Care. David David <laughs> Kampf is leading them in scoring. He's a fourth. He's a fourth liner on their team. And for some reason, Literally. he hasn't been elevated, even though he's been like the only guy who seems to give a shit. Um, yeah, like my thing on this too is that like you know when people talk about like. Um, you know, if we go back to Rasmus versus Alina and when he was playing on Buffalo and how bad he was and people are like, oh, he's on a bad team. He's on a bad team. Like, 
teams are bad because they have bad players, right? So when you're on a team, like, they're like, oh, like, the Leafs, like, they just need to figure it out. They just need to figure it out. It's like, no, like, the guys who are leading the charge on that team are the ones that need to figure it out because they are the ones who carry that team. Like, any any team, if your star players can't figure it out, like, Tampa Bay would not have won Stanley Cups if Steven Samkos just needed some time to figure it out or whatever. Like, that's <laughs> not how that works, you know? Like, no. so at what point does it happen? And these guys aren't as young as they used to be either. It's like, personally, like, I know this is so dramatic, but I think once they win a playoff series, they will be fine. It's it's but, the, it's it's the monkey off the back. I think that like yeah like, exactly. And and then until then and until the playoffs come, it's just like a thing where you have to kind of sit and sit and shit from last year, you know. Um, mm-hmm. like I don't know where. Okay, so a lot of conversation has been had in 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 Leafland. Unfortunately, I'm somewhat connected to to it, so I I through other people get a lot of exposure to it. Um. There's a lot of discussion on whether or not Sheldon Keefe should be fired at this point, and also whether or not even considering that is fair. Um, Liz, what is your take? What do you think? Do you think that it would be, one, fair for people to even consider firing Keefe, even though he is, like, the most winningest coach um, in Leaf history, like, percentage-wise? Um, or do you think that, like, you know, do you think that's not an awful route to go down? Yeah, I don't think that Sheldon Keefe is the problem. I don't. I think he's one of the better coaches in the NHL. Like, not you know top tier by any means, but I think that he's really figured out a lot of things that make sense for his team, which I think is what coaches need to do. Not just come in like an NFL coach with their own strategy and say adapt or die. Um, like I, so I like him as a coach. That being said. I do think that this team needs a shakeup and what are you going to do? Trade Austin Matthews? No. And that sometimes the coach ends up being the scapegoat because it's easier to fire a coach than it is to fire a team, right? Because there are 30 guys that you have, like you can't move them all. So I understand it. I So if, if that's people's logic behind it, I get it. But if they think that the team is losing because Keefe is a bad coach, then I don't agree, nor do I understand why they would say that, you know? Yeah, I I definitely uh I I get it. I completely understand where it's coming from, but I'm also like at this point the Leafs have had like that core of Leafs have had I think two coaches now. Well, two coaches now, I guess, yeah. Since like, they've had Babcock and then obviously uh Keith comes in now. Um and I don't think the coach is the problem. Like I think that that's that's at the end of the day, it's the players need to figure out and stop being kind of babies and 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 you know actually act like they're they should be getting the money that they should be um you know like I, what does bringing another coach in do but at the same time it's like what else can you do right like there the, you you like as you said like you you have to shake it up somehow sometimes just having a new voice in the in the dressing room can yeah um you know can do a lot, but at the same time, it's like also who who would they even bring in? Like everyone's saying Barry Trotz, and like man, I would be personally uh, pretty upset if if that um you know ended up being yeah. what happens, especially considering um what happened uh, here <laughs> over the off season. But like I, I I don't really see a solution there, and also at the same time, it's like at the end of the day, I think it's just like Keith needs to be absolutely bag skating these guys. They need to be doing something to be like, this is not okay. You will lose jobs. People, you know, maybe send someone down who like, but at the same time, it's like the the people who are actually providing value to them are, are players on the f- third and fourth line. So I don't, I don't really know what the, the fix is here. Like, do you send like a guy like Pierre Engvall down to send a message? But like, I don't know. I, I'm also not too close to the Leafs. I'm, I, again, only get what I hear from Leafs fans pissing and shitting themselves all the time oh for sure. um so i okay why don't i give you a hot take go for it i think i would get rid of dubis before i'd get rid of keith oh well i'm you know what i think okay this is where where i if you're doing this thing where you're jumping past the coach to to fire someone and you go to the gm I think at that point you need to you need to go up higher and go Brendan Shanahan like you've been here for how long? Great, you know what? It things have worked out in general. Things have gotten better under you, but like you know, Dubis was his hire. Keith was Dubis his hire. At, at some point, it's like if you're making that amount of change, 
I think you almost got to go all the way up and go, we're cleaning house kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Cause like, what have, what have you done for me lately? It's, it's a really big mm-hmm. thing in the NHL. And again, I, I think that firing anyone in this circumstance right now at this moment, a bit of an overreaction personally. Yes. But I, I also completely understand it. And also, you know, it's not an overreaction if we in like th- three more games have three absolute duds. Like they play tonight against the – okay, actually this is, this would be a great – this is a, actually a great litmus test for them. They play tonight against the Ducks to finish off their road trip. That's a ga- a, a, ga- a team that has won a single game this year. You have to beat them. Then they play uh, Philly at home. While Philly has Ooh. been good this year – or They're good, still a bad team. Good in quotes. They've won games, but – They've won games, but that's it. Um, after that, you know what? Like you, you, you have to beat, I, you have to win two of these next three games because the third one is against Boston and that's yeah, a game. Not that one either. Well, but that's also a game where you, okay, you, okay. We have two games in, in a row here that we should win because these are teams that are not good enough to beat us or shouldn't be good enough to beat us. And then we have an actual game of like, where do we actually stand in this, in this conference in this right division. it's like oh maybe we are actually bad they're if, not but if they keep losing if they lose those two games and they lose that one ooh, maybe they are bad my prediction if they lose the next two games because right now they're on a, a three game losing streak if they go five losses in a row i think someone gets fired yeah oh yeah or, or traded or something something happens that's significant because eventually yeah, personal it has change to in some capacity oh yeah and you gotta do do it now right because it's like fight you don't fire your coach if you know say you're the boston bruins right now and you're first and you maintain this pace that they're at and all of a sudden they go on like an eight game losing streak right before the playoffs you're not going to fire your coach like you do it now while you have the chance to implement the changes that a new person or a new whatever a new forward like a new superstar if you trade one of your stars for someone else like you you give it some time to gel to figure it out before it actually matters yeah so i i could see it too Especially considering it's not five losses to, you know, you're not doing your West Coast road trip and you're going, you know, Colorado, Edmonton, Calgary, like you're yeah. it's it's the ducks and the sharks like Jesus. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, for sure. But it'll be interesting to see uh, always under a microscope. So I feel like we're always, you know, involved in what's going on there. But uh, but it's also it'll fun. be interesting to see if they can figure it out. It's yep. fun to watch them all lose their minds and, and crumble for as, sure. But as much as, as the Jets are are a tire fire sometimes, it's really fun and funny when the Leafs are. So I'll... Also, are the Philadelphia Flyers and the Winnipeg Jets the same team? <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? Because <laughs> they keep winning games, but the, they're oh, bad. Oh, but they stink? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe, but I don't, I don't think that, uh, you know, Say what you will about Chevy. He's certainly not Chuck Fletcher. And uh No, he is not Chuck Fletcher. And um I, I think the Jets have, have a lot more uh internal I think I think the Jets issues are much more like under I can't not underground, but there's layers to them that I think that it goes you need to get down into that depth and really, you know, excavate it and make sure that, you know, you build it up properly. Because I think that there's just a lot of bad habits that the Jets have. But we're not talking about the Jets right now. Um. Okay. To move I, on. That was kind of it for teams that I wanted to talk about. Like, I feel like there is a lot of other stuff happening, but as far as like general team overarching stuff, I feel like yeah, you know, Yotes connects Leafs is the busiest. <laughs> I, will, I will say this. Um, I was checking the other day on Natural Stat Trick just to see uh what team is leading in in expected goals share. I want you to guess. I want you to guess right now. It's an Eastern Conference team. Who are who is leading in expected goals share? Philadelphia Flyers. It is not the Philadelphia Flyers. However, the Ottawa Senators. It's a te- no. It is not. But it's a team that has not made the playoffs in years. And right Detroit, now, Detroit, Detroit, Detroit. Nope. Oh. It is the New Jersey Devils. Oh yes, yes, yes. Because Jesper Bratt is on fire. Yeah, they have been doing insane. I I just figured it is worth mentioning. They've been they've like been playing insanely well, but they can't Actually, get a Actually, yeah, you're they, right. But they can't get a save. Luckily the other day Vanacek finally had like a shutout in one, but other than that it's like Mackenzie Blackwood's been garbage for like 3 years now. I think even uh, on our our preview show I was like maybe Blackwood will have a, a rebound. No, absolutely not. That guy stinks. Um and Maybe he it's it's cuz he got vaccinated and now he's oh, you know, <laughs> broken. He got the jab. <laughs> 
Sorry. Um, that's okay. Uh, and then they got like Vitek Vanacek, who like uh, the Caps were like, both of our goalies stink. We don't want them. Uh, and then they were like, we'll take him, um, which is really funny after they trade like a second for him to come back. Literally the same. Oh, yeah, that was such a weird asset management piece. <laughs> um, but no, New Jersey, if I were them, I would do everything I can to bring in a goalie right now. Because like, if you can keep this up, like while exactly, you can yeah. win these games, like if you regress a little bit, that's fine. But you still have all these wins in the bank, and then you actually might be in much better shape than you anticipated. So absolutely, they should bring in a goalie because everything else seems to be working out really well for them right now. Yeah. Oh, and also one other thing, I'm gonna mention this just because we should go back just really quickly. My last thing to say on the Leafs, um, oh, I God. will, I will going back like to the Dubas thing. Why I don't think Dubas should be fired? Uh, he found a goalie like. I know Ilya Samson have kind of fell into their lap because, you know, the the Capitals were like, we just don't want to re-sign him. But, like, I think the, like, the Matt Murray stuff gets heavily criticized for good reason um, because, like, it's Matt Murray. Um, but him, like, Dubas bringing in both of these guys, who they were like, okay, well, one of these guys has to break out and do well. well one of them has to work out, yeah, exactly. And And you know what? Samsonov looks like he could be just a starter, like straight up. And so, like, if Matt Murray's your backup, you're fine. Like, that's that. I mean, obviously he's injured right now, but also like, Eric Schalgren's fine, I guess. But anyways, I'm also a goalie hater, though. <laughs> generally speaking, like Philip Grubauer was nominated for a Vezina when he was playing on a good team. Like, I'm not totally surprised. Like, whoever the Leafs brought in, I didn't think was going to be horrendous because the Leafs are a good hockey team. Yeah. Um, just to to return to the Devils, sixty eight percent of the expected goals through how many wow. how many games now? Like oh, ten maybe. I don't know. I'm gonna go check. Ten. Uh eight. Eight games for them. Insane. Like the the top five, and just to go to show that this actually is like a meaningful stat and should show like good teams. The Devils, Hurricanes, Panthers, Bruins, Golden Knights. Like those are all teams who should be at the top of that list. Um, so, you know, just to, in case anyone's curious on the validity of expected goal share, uh, it's usually a pretty good telling, uh, stat. Um, but anyways, um, uh, and, uh, that's, that's all we had to say teams wise. Um, there are a couple of things player wise, I guess we could, could mention, um, and starting off Phil Kessel is your new Ironman streak leader. He's still currently our on go- boy. Our boy. I think he's nearing the a thousand game mark. I don't know if he has hit it yet. Unfortunately, I'm I'm too stupid to to have looked this up before. <laughs> um, but he's the new uh, 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 Iron Man uh, leader, which is hilarious because he's like almost the exact antithesis of what you would expect from an Iron Man player. Like, sure, Keith Yandel before him, whatever. Like he, you know, he he was just a D man. He was an offensive D man. And like, that's a guy who you would be like, okay, he's not getting into a ton of fights. You know, it makes sense why he could play a lot of games. And, you know, D men can also like, you know, it, it's not always as hard on their bodies because uh, if you look at guys like a, like a guy like Ryan Suter, like they're able to, you know, pace themselves a lot more in the game. Um, but Phil Kessel, man, insane. Like, did you see the, the quotes that came out um, <laughs> from, from other players who had played with him? I'll share my favorite one first is the one about when they were doing the combine um, or like training camp or whatever. And he was sitting there and he was like on his phone or reading or something. And people were like, um, like, why aren't you out there like doing stuff? And he's and they're like on on the machines and whatnot. And he's like, hey, what are you doing? They're like, oh, like press. He's like, you want to see what I can do? He goes, does one rep, beats them all and goes and sits back down. And I was like, yeah. honestly, that's just that's such king behavior. Like that one was my favorite. I obviously butchered the delivery of the story, but it was that's so okay. funny. I, I think one of the funniest ones, um, I don't have it here right now, but it, it was just like mentioned, like just I feel like sums him up to a uh like to a T at his base level. Is he says something along the lines of like, I don't like to skate and I don't like to practice and I don't like to do working out, even though he is like extremely athletic and one of the strongest guys there. Um he's like the only thing that I I, I do all of those things just enough so that I can play hockey because playing in games is the fun part. Which is like that is so like it brings a joy to my heart. Like Phil Kessel, I love him. I, <laughs> I think that's great. No, and I, it's honestly so facts because like that's obviously he has so much like just like raw natural ability that he's like I will do the bare minimum just to have a good time. Respect <laughs> the shit out of that. 
<laughs> he's doing what he wants to do. I love it. I also love that one of the games from this Iron Man streak is the beloved um, Arizona game yeah. um, when he was with Arizona when his wife was like in labor in the hospital, goes out, skates a shift, and then leaves. <laughs> Iconic, Absolutely. iconic, and and also shout out the uh, the the coyotes for letting him do that. Like that is so like I just love that. That makes me so happy. They weren't caring about winning that season. But, they didn't care like that game. Whatever. It's like let the but, man come on. It's like when Keith Yandel was gonna get scratched. Do you remember that when he was like yeah. six games away? Like, come on, like shut the f- come on. <laughs> yeah. Um. Some other really funny. So the, there was this one article on Sportsnet where they kind of talked to uh, a bunch of the like previous teammates. Um, I think Wheeler had some of the the best quotes about him uh, talking about when they played together uh, on on the uh, on like the U.S. American team in 2014. Mm-hmm. He, so this is one of the quotes he has. I remember walking into his room in the Olympic Village in 2014 and the amount of candy wrappers stacked up next to his bed. I think that th- I think that was what he brought back, uh, brought f- Jesus, brought from home to Sochi. Um, he goes. Wheeler uh, notes most other guys brought over things like protein bars, but for Phil, it was, you know, his favorite candies, um, which to that, uh, he has a completely correct uh, thing in saying that Sour Patch Kids were Kessel's uh, number one favorite. That is the correct opinion. Sour Patch Kids go hard. Um, and And then he hits us with probably the funniest quote of it, which is, and I don't know if this still still holds true, but for the longest time, he never drank water. He would only drink blue Powerade. He didn't like the taste of water. Bro! Like, it's giving the same vibes as, what is it? Um, Alex Ovechkin, Ovechkin like drinks Dr. Pepper like out of a water bottle on the bench. Yeah, Pepsi or something. I, it was, I think it was Coke or something. I don't know. But like, I think it's Dr. Pepper. Oh. But yeah, I know. It's like, and I think it's, yeah, you have the Nate McKinnons of the world who are like, <laughs> if I get gluten in me, I will die. And then you also have the two guys with the currently the longest streaks keith yandel and phil castle i'm pretty sure keith yandel eats ice cream before every single game um <laughs> it's not a thing i i think i, I saw it somewhere and phil I'm castle sure. is phil castle so phil castle man. legendary absolute king like i'm i'm so happy for him he uh it deserves it he's a great guy and also like has put up with a lot of bullshit in his career yes like having the whole like steve simmons story about him eating hot dogs before like every single day i hate steve simmons it's yo oh oh, we certainly do he is the worst um this is when he was just getting i hate steve simmons show (laughs) for real this is when he was just starting to be uh a, a dumbass and 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 uh bad journalist um, but yeah, and then like, you know, then obviously he goes to Pittsburgh, wins the cup with them twice, takes photos with the Stanley cup, eating hot dogs out of it. Guy just loves the game. Good guy tries hard. Phil Kessel, Iron Man leader. That's all I have to say. Congratulations, Phil. Yeah, absolutely. No. <laughs> um, good, good guy. Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, other things to quickly touch on. Um, some injuries. Uh, Josh Norris, uh, rest in peace. Unfortunately, he's going to be out, uh, I think, a couple months now, um, which kind of sucks because he's the, you know, the Sens' top center. Um, at this point, though, in in on the topic of the Sens, a little more room for Shane Pinto. Guy's been kind of going crazy. I wasn't sure how... Um, good Shane Pinto was and like I, I I knew that Shane or that that Ottawa fans had him pretty highly regarded you know saying things but we all at, do that with our own prospects so exactly it's, it's Sa- kind of a moot point they were they were saying things along the lines of like you know in a in the offseason they were like oh yeah you know Arizona would have to add in a chicken and trade for uh Shane Pinto um which is insane and hilarious um also another uh, thing to add. Um, I think Chikrin also suffered another setback, which sucks because it's like, when is this guy ever going to play again? And will he ever get traded? He's forever going to yeah, be on literally. the trading block. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, hope, hope the Sens can, uh, figure it out without Josh Norris. Yeah. That's, um, a, that's a big blow to them. He's really emerged the last couple man, of years and like has star potential. He it's, it's really funny. Cause I remember him being in that, um, in that Eric Carlson trade, yeah, uh, and like and like that was one of the the higher key pieces. I think that did they even get a first? I think it was like they got a second and Josh Norris and a bunch of other. No, no, was there a couple of firsts or something? 
Mm, I have no I don't idea. Remember. I can't remember. It's too long ago. To, the pandemic has erased my brain of anything that happened ever. Um, yep. But like, I just remember him being coming over and being like, "Oh, yo, he might be a top nine guy." And like, he's kind of shown that he can be at very like on a good team. I would guess he'd be like a second line center. Like I like he's been very good. So uh, it's very funny to see how like the the first uh, instincts of that trade was to go, you know, like, "Oh, you just got a bunch of." Um, small pieces for one gigantic piece who was Eric Carlson and then fast forward today and uh I mean I guess Carlson's been better n- this year since Burns has yeah, left but he looks good but uh it certainly has not lived up to his contract unfortunately oh god no yeah no for sure um in more positive injury news um Depending Brad Marchand are. came back Ugh, no it's good for the league Get I agree out of here. I, I agree I'm I, <laughs> I'm more being like if you're a Leafs fan then it's not good I, for you <laughs> I am like it's it, one of those things where it's like if Brad Marchand has a thousand fans, I am one of them. If Brad Marchand has one fan, I am her. If Brad <laughs> Marchand has zero fans, I am no longer alive. I love <laughs> Brad Marchand. I think he's incredible. Anyways, um, he's... came back from injury like I would say like like what three weeks before he was supposed to, which is great. Um, and before we get too much into him as a guy and the amazing you know first game back that he had, he's not playing back to backs. Yeah. I love this concept. The like, you know, we see it in a lot of other like um leagues and sports and stuff like that. Like football doesn't really count. They only play once a week. They load manage everybody, not just the stars. Yeah. But in baseball, like they have rules in place to load manage their stars, but then teams also do that. Like I think this is a really great way to bring someone back into the lineup um or even just, you know, in general like if the Edmonton Oilers win the President's Trophy, like, and they've locked up home ice, like, yeah, why not load manage Connor McDavid? Exactly. And, like, why not load? Like, I fully support this concept. I think it's really smart. I think it's new and it's unfamiliar, so people aren't going to like it. But I think in the grand scheme of things, it makes a lot of sense. He's n- it's new and unfamiliar in the NHL. I feel like, I feel like yes. the NHL does kind of what the NBA does always, like, five years after they do. Um, oh, because true. I feel like the NBA also kind of has a very similar, like, Similar style of season, similar style of like play to hockey in the sense of like it's a high off like you know high offense game. You know you, you got to be good for I think it's like forty eight minutes or sixty minutes in in the NHL. Um, so I and they say again they play the same amount of games I think around eighty two. Um, so it's uh very comparable and like I remember th- when load management first kind of came into my mind. Uh, from the NBA was when uh, when the the Raptors traded for Kawhi and like he was coming off of an injury so they're like okay well we're gonna play him like every two games like we'll sit him two games play him one and it's like that is absolutely the the right way to be doing it and like you know maybe maybe this is a bit different if if the Bruins are in a bit of a tailspin but you know if if they were doing bad on the season maybe they'd be trying to push to put you know get Brad Marchand back out there immediately, but they've been doing fantastic this year. Like they are, I'm pretty sure they're leading the league. Um, so yeah, like this is just being smart with your asset, making sure that he's good to go while giving him, you know, a little bit of a taste here and there. And uh, of course he comes out for his first game, scores two goals, gets an assist, looks like Brad Marchand of old, um, probably got under some people's, uh, under some people's skin. Um, oh, I, yeah, brother. I have him on my fantasy team and I, didn't take him out of uh, the IR slot for that game because I was like, rest in peace. well, I was like, you know what? I'd rather keep him here. And then when 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 we're ready to bring him in, uh, you know, if once it makes sense for my week to bring him in, I'll bring him in. But then uh, he got like 11.2 points for me and I just had him on my IR and I think I'm going to lose by like maybe four points. So uh, rest in peace. Um taking an L on that one I I should have put him back and I should have known but um yeah it's good to see Brad Marchand's back he's he is good for the league regardless of what you think of him as a player he's a good hockey player he's funny he's a nice guy like and he's like he's got some personality he's a good dude but he's also got some bite and then it's hilarious I love Brad Marchand I think he's one of the best things to happen in this league as of late like I love 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 him yeah He's he's wild, uh, but I, hopefully he uh, doesn't like anyone anymore. <laughs> God. For sure. Um, but yeah, I think we kind of, you know, the NHL is just such a weird league where it's like these things that we'll talk about. Um, 
it's like half of this wouldn't even be newsworthy in other leagues. And we're just talking about like Mikey DiPietro getting traded for Jax Danica. It's like, mm, oh. it's the okay. it's the Snoop Dogg who, uh, who? Meme. <laughs> literally, no, exactly. But, uh, you know, you're here for a good time, not a long time. So we'll just, you know, chat about the things as they come up, which is fun. Um, one other thing to briefly mention um, is that we are at the anniversary right now of the um, Kyle Beach um, you know, the release of that, you know, legal document and all that kind of stuff coming to light and some of that stuff. So uh, it's been a rough go for uh, quite a few people in the last couple of days. So hearts going out to everyone that was, you know, we're still seeing a lot of the pain points from that one and, you know, not people, people not getting the the consequences we may think that they should um, mm-hmm. and not seeing the repercussions that we'd like them to. Um, so it's just been a weird couple of days, you know, for those of us who are, you know, feeling equally, if not more impacted by that just in light of it being the anniversary of that, um, you know, going on and whatnot. So hearts go out to everybody. Um, it's tough stuff out there. So for sure. So, um, we like games. We'll try and end this off with a game. Brady, I have a game for you. Um, Oh no. This is a very standard type of game. Um, I have seven players here for you and I'm going to tell you which teams they played on in what order. And you have to guess who the player is. Okay. So these are all active players right now. So if it was like, say I said, you know, Boston, Atlanta, Winnipeg, Lake Wheeler, Arizona, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So exactly. That's who it would be. So it's going to be okay. where they started. It's all NHL teams. There, you know, some movement, maybe some guys played in Europe or maybe some guys played in the AHL. Got I'm it. just going with their NHL franchises. These are all active players in the current NHL. Um, and yeah, so I have seven guys. You need four out of seven to win. And, uh, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see how you do. We'll see. So I'm going to start. You ready to go? Yeah. I said, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's go. Let's go. I'm ready. Awesome. Alrighty. So we're going to start with something that's maybe a little bit easier. Anaheim Ducks, Dallas Stars, Montreal Canadiens, Tampa Bay Lightning. Okay. Anaheim to where? Sorry. Anaheim. Dallas. To Dallas. To Montreal, to Tampa. Anaheim, Montreal. No, Anaheim, Dallas, Montreal, Tampa. Oh no. Anaheim, it's not. It's not. No. Um. Oh God, sorry. This is awful podcasting content. Give me a second. I need to think about this. Everyone else can think about it too at the same time. Anaheim, Dallas. Who would have played on Dallas? Who is? I didn't know. Did domestic? No, he didn't start with the Ducks. Oh. Okay, I need to tell you while you're thinking of this. Um, my sister is on the couch beside me, and I just heard her whisper the answer. So you oh, no. need to get on it. <laughs> oh no! Um, <laughs> who would have played for the Ducks and the Stars and Tampa and Montreal? Who played on Montreal and? Like I my... can tell you. Um, it's lengthiest stint was the one at the beginning and some quick time frames in the last couple of years. Okay. No. Okay. Who would have? Oh, uh, no, no, nah. I can't think of this. I'm going to, I'm going to just take the L on it. Oh my God. Is I'm going to hear, you're going to tell me and I'm going to be upset with myself. Aren't I? It's Corey Perry. Oh, Oh my god, I'm so stupid. I, I, for some reason, my brain, I couldn't get past the top six, and I was just like, mm. <sighs> Oh, oh man. well, you're not gonna do well in this game then. I'll be honest. Just when kidding. you, when you, when you said Anaheim and then Dallas, my brain, my the only thing my brain said was Andrew Cogliano, and then you said Montreal right? and, and Tampa, and then I was just like, Andrew Cogliano has not played for those teams, but the answer is at Andrew Cogliano. <laughs> Andrew Cogliano is such a like a. What, um, what's you know my favorite tweet I talk about all the time the Pittsburgh one he, he's that guy he's just like the random one you would look at and he's like why did Andrew Cogliano have 40 points in this year like Dude, you know five years ago I loved Andrew but, Cogliano when he was on the the what's it called the Oilers back in the day ugh boo loved him Thanks. okay okay going in so you're 0 for 1 ugh, okay God. going into the next one this one's a classic Columbus New York Rangers Ottawa, Pittsburgh, Florida, Colorado, New York Islanders, Arizona, Philly, Edmonton, Ottawa. Who? Uh, Derek Brassard? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> that was one where like it came up in my head and then I was like, I don't know if you played for all those teams, but <laughs> sure. <laughs> Literally. No. Yeah. Dead. All right. Cool. Okay. I feel Our good. Boy. And almost Winnipeg, but then Vegas blocked the trade by doing some weird. Th- I don't know. Do you remember that? No, I don't actually. I remember they were going to, they were going to trade him to Winnipeg. It was, it was when we were, when we were acquiring Paul Stastny. Um, oh, we were going to, acqu- we, yeah, we, yeah, the first time we were going to get uh Broussard and then they like the the golden knights ended up being like we will fil- facilitate the trade but you can't trade him to um to winnipeg basically because we were in their division and anyways go ahead Sorry. interesting good okay so you're one for two okay yeah. okay next let's go i got this i got this ottawa senators florida panthers st louis blues montreal canadians Ottawa, Florida, St. Louis, Montreal. Yeah. Ottawa, Florida, St. Louis, Montreal. Who plays for the Canadians right now? Uh, Ottawa, Florida. Ottawa, sorry, Ottawa, Florida, St. Louis, Montreal. Correct. Okay, the St. Louis Montreal thing leads me to say Joel Edmondson, but I don't think he ever played for Ottawa or Florida. So I don't know. Um, You're taking the L on this one. Just, just okay. Well, it's, uh, give me a second. Let me think. First, okay, okay, me, okay. Who plays for the Canadians right now? No one. Um, Cole Caulfield. Cole Caulfield. <laughs> Uh, 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 Jake Allen is my guess. Is it Jake? The Allen? answer is Mike Hoffman. Oh, okay. He was. Oh yeah, that makes sense. I forgot about the Blues. Damn. Mm, and yeah. I also forgot he even exists anymore. I feel like he, yeah. Also, he was true. one of those guys who was really good for a while, and then was actually not good. He just scored a lot of goals, and then as soon as That's he went exactly to a place, Mike Hoffman, where he couldn't be, you know, he didn't have passers. Anyways. I'm stupid. Excellent. So, one for three. Am I going to get a passing grade? Come on. We will see. Okay, next one. Boston, Los Angeles, Edmonton, Calgary. Boston, LA, Edmonton, Calgary. Correct. Milan Lucic. That is correct. Yes. I will never forget him playing for the Kings. Excellent. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Anyways, continue. Sorry. Now you are 2-4-4, four, four, so you need two more wins. Okay, this one's kind of a strange one. Columbus, Florida, Seattle. Columbus, how'd Florida. How would you get some Seattle in there? Yeah. Columbus, Florida, Seattle. Oh, who did they... T- I would imagine it's whoever they took from Florida. But I have no idea. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Was it a D man? Did they take a D man? Because their D kind of stinks now. But it also could be a forward. It wasn't a goalie. Columbus, Florida, Seattle. I feel like this is a forward would be my guess, but I'm not sure. I'm just wasting time trying to think of who's on their forward. Alex Wenberg. That is correct. Yes. Man, Excellent. That, okay. That's a guy who I barely think about. I've I never think about him. He's a, he's I have no idea how he's still in their top six. He Anyways, takes, because it's Seattle. What, what do you well, mean? I don't know. They've got guys. They've got other guys. No, yeah, they he, don't. I mean, okay, but the, he's a center. So like Yanni Gord, and Matty Beniers, those guys are guys who should be above him. Also, uh, I just got a notification that New Jersey is winning 6-1 against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Let's so. a- absolutely go. Um, it's because Patrick Wine is injured. If we're if we're doing uh, things that we got, um, this is uh, regarding the Coyotes uh, and their their arena. Uh, per sources, the Tempe City Council is likely to refer the Coyotes Arena and Entertainment District proposal to referendum, leaving a vote in the citizens' hands. That may delay mm. the process, but the proposal appears to have support. 
I think that that will. I think that's a good. I think that's good. I think that the citizens. Because then people actually know about it. That as well too, but I I think that that'll get it done. Okay. Anyways, we don't need to spend any time on that. We can continue the game. Okay, so you're three for five. We have two left. Okay. This person, I'll, I'm going a bit more off the board, but when Winnipeg is involved, I feel that oh, I am allowed to go off the board. That's okay. Go for it. Let's do it. Dallas, Montreal, Vancouver, Winnipeg, Minnesota, Toronto. Dallas? Sorry, you got to repeat that for me. Dallas, Montreal, Vancouver, Winnipeg, Minnesota, Toronto. He's in Toronto now. Yeah. I should. I need to get this, or I'll be upset with myself. Uh, is it? Uh, it's Jordy Ben. Is that it is Jordy correct. Ben? Yes. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> I was like, who did we get from Vancouver ever? <laughs> and no, it's not, it's not Nate Schmidt. <laughs> but anyways, continue. Uh, I guess I have I won. I just that four out of six. So you have one. It's four for six. Yes. But do you want right. to go for the Bonus last point. one? Yeah, let's go. Bonus point. Absolutely. Okay. New York Islanders, Calgary, Vancouver, Ottawa. Ooh, Calgary, Vancouver, Ottawa. Started with the Islanders. Islanders. Wait, Islanders. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I me- I mixed myself up. Islanders, Vancouver, Calgary, Ottawa. Islanders, Vancouver, or no, Islanders, Calgary, Vancouver, Ottawa. Hmm. Uh, Travis Hamanick. Yeah, that is traded correct. Traded for a third round pick, even though he was going to be on waivers. <laughs> Never they forget. just had to have him. They just had to have him. <laughs> the Jets with Mason Appleton just had True. to have him. Well, that brings you to five for seven. So congratulations. You Let's passed. You, I win. you won the game. I, what do I win? I'm, I'm kidding. Um, um, <laughs> uh, you can uh, go to family dinner with your family and enjoy it on this lovely Sunday evening. Uh, I was you can go that. watch Sunday night football. Or I can go watch the Jets probably lose. I can't remember who they're playing tonight, but they'll probably lose. Vegas? I think they play Vegas tonight. Oh, they'll probably lose. Considering they will last, definitely lose. Considering last time they got scored on like three goals in the first, like, what, 10 minutes? I don't know. Um, anyways. Yeah, and also Vegas is good and the Winnipeg Jets are bad, so there's also that. That's true. Um, hell yeah. Um, <laughs> Always a pleasure. It is. It has been. Uh, I think that was a fun episode. We, we'll keep this one a little shorter. Uh, we usually aim to do closer to an hour 15, um, but I feel like the most recent episodes have been a little bit longer. Um, Which so is we'll, very, very passionate, you know, yeah, lots we, of opinions. We just love to talk. <laughs> Neither of us Anyone ever Anyone who shut knows up. me is not surprised. No, it's <laughs> insane. I feel like a lot of Brady Nice conversations is just both of us like speaking into the void. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one just going, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah and it's like when is it gonna be my turn to talk because i have things to say yeah only thinking about what i can say next not how to not like what you're saying <laughs> not active so listening <laughs> um anyways though thank you guys all for uh joining us um always uh as always follow us on uh on twitter uh at can't each size on tiktok at also at can't each size um leave us a uh rating on the podcast app that you use um follow or subscribe to our youtube and like the video and all those uh things that people always tell you to do um but this has been fantastic oh one last thing uh if you've made it this far i'm raising money for easter seals uh i'm going to play in uh in a, in a celebrity hockey tournament anyways easter seals is awesome they're a great charity they do uh, a lot of stuff for uh families uh with kids with dif- uh, uh, physical disabilities um so if you want to be helpful, uh, donate to my page. I'll put it in the description of the podcast uh, on everything here. Um, but anyways, that is all. Thank you all for showing up. Uh, have yourselves a good one. Uh, as always, stay safe, and we'll see you next week. Bye.